published 0701 EDT, the 14th of September 2017, updated 0917 EDT, the 14th of September 2017. It was on June 7th that Liverpool released their startling statement apologising to Southampton for speculation surrounding Virgil van Dijk and ending any interest in the player. Reading between the lines, Liverpool may have harboured hopes that ultimately a deal for Van Dijk could be reprised later in the window. But taken at face value, it left 85 days for Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool's recruitment team to pinpoint and pursue an alternative option to reinforce central defence. Clearly it was an area of the team identified as in need of strengthening. Klopp had by widespread belief met Van Dijk convincing the Dutchman of Anfield's allure and Liverpool were ready to commit £60 million at a stage in the summer before money lost all meaning. A move appeared imminent. That was until Southampton got wind and stood firm in a conviction Van Dijk would now be sold. Liverpool got off to the worst possible start when Wissam Ben Yedder slid the ball home day and Lovren sent a slip to allow Ben Yedder to score Seville's first goal. Liverpool tried and failed to complete a deal for Southampton's Virgil van Dijk in the summer. Liverpool went to that significant trouble because van Dijk is a very good player of strong mentality who would elevate Klopp's side at a stroke. Yet it cannot be that it was Van Dyke and nothing, Dutch a bust. Having realised Southampton were in no mood to do business in early June, Liverpool still had two and a half months to switch targets, to look at who else might slot into a backline in need of upgrading. Michael Keane did not sign for Everton until the start of July, for example. Liverpool had weighed up a bit before going for Van Dijk and though Manchester United looked in the driving seat in early June, Victor Lindelof's arrival to Old Trafford changed the landscape. It was Everton though, who pushed hard for Keane and got their man. Antonio Rudiger joined Chelsea on July 9. Manchester City signed three full-backs in the middle of that month, and Tottenham even found time to bring in De Vincent Sanchez in August. Not all these players would have been right for Liverpool. None, perhaps. There seemed to be no real attempt at a plan B after they missed out on Van Dijk after the severe draw. Jurgen Klopp said Liverpool need to learn to not give easy goals but the point is that there was ample room for them to address an area that has been crying out for proper authority ever since Klopp took the reins in October 2015 on Liverpool's Champions League return against Sevilla. That undeniable truth was again in evidence. Liverpool ought to have won the game and would have done but for the concession of two goals that could have been avoided. For the first, Dan Lovren erred gravely when trying to clear Sergio Escudero's cross, allowing Wissam Ben Yedder a tap in. Mistakes can be made by anyone, but this is not the first offence by Lovren and it was a glaring moment of mistiming. For Sevilla's second, Liverpool failed to react to a quick throw-in and though the ensuing move was slick, Joaquin Correa benefited from Alberto Marino making an odd movement backwards to guard an imagined threat and allow space in the middle of the area. Liverpool's attack is devastating because of its unpredictability but that same quality makes for a porous defence. It was the same at Watford, when some scrambled set-piece organisation created chaos and a 33 draw. While at Manchester City the 50 scoreline cannot easily be explained away as due to Sadio Main's first half red card. The Liverpool side slowly line up for the team photo ahead of the severe game Joaquin Correa was left with the freedom of Liverpool penalty area to curl in the second yes, Pep Guardiola's side are the worst possible team to face with only 10 men. But as an attacker Main's absence only limited Liverpool's offensive capacity, mainly through counters. The general defensive shape should not have been altered to an extent that justified such a collapse at the Etihad.
midfield and defence should have been more compact to limit the opportunities for City to run in behind. Klopp takes ultimate responsibility for that. The way he sends out his team to attack with verve is bold and thrilling, but is enough work done on the more mundane aspects of the game. The Germans' selections are open to scrutiny on that basis also. Ragnar Klavan replaced Lovren at City and failed to impress, struggling to deal with Gabriel Jesus in particular. Clavin is a 31-year-old who spent four years at Augsburg before joining Liverpool last summer for a modest £4.2 million. The price tag and career history suggested backup player, but instead he is vying with Joel Matip and Lovren for a starting berth. It is a shallow pool of not great quality, it must be said. Mamadou Sakho, probably Liverpool's best defender at the time, was not considered since falling out with Klopp last summer and subsequently sold to Crystal Palace. Joe Gomez is a huge talent and natural centre-back but he is only 20 and currently operating at right-back. Klopp also needs to make a definitive decision on what he wants to do with his goalkeepers. The draw against Sevilla comes just days after Klopp's Liverpool last 50 at Manchester City. Klopp's approach to goalkeepers has been equally at odds with convention. Simon Mignolet was rested in place of Loris Carrius for the Arsenal game 140, then restored for the trip to City. Carrius, though, will be Liverpool's European goalkeeper. Danny Ward, who was kept from going back out on loan, is expected to get games in the domestic cup competitions. Neither Mignolet nor Carrius have particularly convinced and the constant juggling seems unlikely to foster the kind of belief required between the man between the sticks and those immediately in front. A commanding number one might well have been a priority to this summer. Instead Liverpool signed Mo Salah to increase an already vibrant front line and while he has started superbly there remains the nagging doubt about the team's capacity for clean sheets that will ultimately be the measure of them as title contenders or Champions League runners. Alex Oxlady Chamberlain finished the game with severe playing at right back signing Alex Oxlady Chamberlain was like getting a new carpet when the pipes are leaking. He is a good squad addition but primarily in central midfield, a congested area already. And if anything, a player to destroy and hold seemed necessary, rather than one capable of bursting forwards from deep. Oxlady Chamberlain ended the severe game covering for Gomez at right back, and while enforced by the red card made it another game where the back line shuffled. Klopp has also used Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson and though exploring options is understandable, the best defences are settled, forming an intuitive understanding of positions, distances and reactions in certain circumstances. Liverpool do not have that appearance. If ambitions are for a genuine push to win the Premier League title and Champions League progress, it is an issue that needs remedying before dipping into to the market that opens again 108 days from now. Will Klopp and Liverpool ultimately pay the price for not bringing in Van Dyke?